This is Modern Persian Food, a culinary podcast for today's food enthusiasts. We talk about classic Persian flavors, modern recipes, and embracing culture and identity through food. I'm Bita. And I'm also Bita. Welcome to our show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode number 120 of the Modern Persian Food Podcast. I am here with the lovely Bita, and this is Bita. We hope you're doing great. It is smack dab in the middle of winter, and we're looking for some cozy comfort food to eat, and none better than our nutritious and delicious adas polo. This is one of our go-to dishes here, a staple in our homes, and we're going to talk through how to make it and how to serve it and some fun ideas to make with it. So, Bita Jun, let's get started. Talk to us about adas polo. Yeah, I love it. How to make adas polo, the steps and shortcuts. One of the things I love about adas polo is that it's relatively easy. It's vegetarian. So if you have to put together a delicious meal and you have vegetarian guests, this is a great option. It's nutritious, it's warming and comforting and super delicious. Yeah, it is. Adas translates to lentil. So this is a lentil rice. It's a layered lentil rice dish that has some accoutrement or some garnishes. A lot of times those are like warm, delicious dates or raisins and sometimes walnuts with some of the warming spices. Yeah, good point. Adas means lentil. Adas polo or lentil rice, layered rice. Yeah, so I kind of make it in the more traditional way of parboiling the rice and then making the lentil mixture in steps and then kind of putting it all together in the pot in a layered rice way. Parboil rice is basically like a method of half cooking your rice or cooking it almost like al dente so that you can then layer it with your other ingredients and cook it all down together for the remaining of the cooking time and all the flavors and spices and everything soak in together. Yeah, absolutely. So when we do make rice, we par cook it first. And then once all the water is kind of absorbed, then you can get to the next step. And in between these two steps is when if you want to put in a crunchy tadik or the saffron tadik or layer some potato slices or with lavash bread or a hack to use a tortilla, this is the time to do it is when you're in between the parboiling stage of the rice before you start layering it. Yeah. And by the way, you don't have to do all these steps in one day. So you could parboil the rice one day and put it in a big airtight container in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to layer it together, you can then put your rice together in your big pot. So the next thing I do is this one does absolutely start with the delicious sauteed onions. So this is where you get the smells going. So we get some olive oil, your cooking oil of choice going, your sliced onions, and the spices are warming spices. They're cinnamon, saffron, bloom saffron, turmeric, and let me tell you, if you just get that going, that your house is going to smell so inviting and comforting and delicious and interesting. This dish has an umami flavor. I would describe it as umami with sweet. And I think that's what it just makes it so different and delicious to me. So I cook the lentils also separately. So again, that could be done on a different day. I really like the petite lentils and I've seen them at Trader Joe's. I buy them in big bagfuls because they tend to hold their shape. If you don't have access to the petite, I would just say don't cook them quite all the way through because again, just like your rice, your lentils are going to have a second cooking stage and that will kind of hold their form and keep it beautiful when you're mixing it together. So yeah, kind of half cook your lentils. I will sometimes cook my lentils in vegetable broth to add another layer of flavor. Yeah, or any type of broth, but if you're keeping it vegetarian, you either cook it in water or veggie broth. So once I've sauteed the onions and the spices, I do also go ahead and lightly cook my chopped dates and raisins. I really like adas polo lentil mixed rice with dates and raisins. It just adds a different kind of sweetness 
when the dates are present. It's kind of like a caramely flavor. How about you, Bita June? Do you like using dates in your Adas Polo? Yes, I love it. I mean, I think that that's like part of the like delicious flavor for me when you're like talking about a kind of standalone layered rice dish. It really makes it complete with the addition of the dates and then, you know, raisins. I really feel like that, that really like amplifies it and makes it a standalone dish versus having protein. And you could totally have protein. We could talk about that in a minute too. But yeah, dates are like one of my favorite parts of it. Yeah, the next ingredient that I use, and it's, I think, what kind of sets my particular Adas Polo apart, is my nut of choice is pistachios in here. So I like using chopped pistachios, so flavorful. You know, they're sort of a rich royal nut. So that's when I'll lightly toast them and add them in. And now once the dates and raisins have kind of warmed and gotten softer and the nuts have gotten just slightly toasted, I will remove it from the heat and stir in the half-cooked lentils. So now the mixture contains the lentils, the sauteed onions that have been cooked down in the spices, the dates and raisins, and the nuts. So this is a delicious mixture that you might choose just to eat because it's so good. And now you take out your parboiled rice, and now is when the layering happens. So here's the step. When you're ready, the day that you're ready to eat this rice, you get a big pot. You put some oil down. If you choose to do some tadig, like Bita June said, that's the time. Now's the time. You put your tadig down, potato or bread. Or just saffron. Yeah. And what the layers are is you put your parboiled rice, your lentil mixture, and that's it rice, lentil mixture, rice, lentil mixture, and with rice. Sometimes I like to add a little extra cinnamon at the very top or even amongst in the layers. I really like the cinnamon in this particular dish. Go ahead and put your steam holes in with the back of a big wooden spoon and follow the steps for any layered rice, which is you're going to then try to keep the steam in. So you'll put your damconi or your cloth on the top, wrap up the lid with your damconi or cloth that you're using, and then you go ahead and steam it the rest of the way and cook it the rest of the way. Sounds delicious, I love that. So to summarize your recipe, you're using parboiled rice and you're using parboiled lentils that you've mixed with sauteed onions, their warming spices and raisins and dates and pistachios, and then layering them together and having the final steps of the rice steam together all together. That sounds so delicious. And I love that you can do that in multiple parts. So it's not kind of an intense like cooking session, you can start off with some rice that you've maybe part cooked already and break it down into parts. So it can be much more accessible if you're trying to make it during the week. So I love that. That sounds super delicious. Yeah, you got it. That's exactly right. If you wanted to just make it super simple from the very beginning, you can actually cook the lentils and the rice all together at the beginning. Sometimes what I'll do is actually just parboil lentils and rice in one pot and then have a separate as type of like a garnish of the sauteed onions, raisins and dates and kind of serve that like on top of the adaspolo. So the adaspolo is plain. And that can also work for if you're cooking for people who maybe don't like raisins or dates or don't want to kind of have that sweet element to the rice, you can kind of just cook it separate. You know, I'm always looking for shortcuts in the kitchen, just trying to, you know, make use of some store-bought ingredients to help move things along. And one item that I have that I buy all the time are these steamed lentils, actually. They come in the grocery section. They're kind of like shrink-wrapped and they're like ready to eat right out of the package. So I love using these. I use it with salmon the other night and they're perfect for other when you don't want to have to like par cook the lentils you can just kind of just use that as a quick ingredient and mix it the way Bita Jim was talking about with the onions and then adding the raisins and dates to it with the cinnamon that's like a shortcut ingredient that I use often and I love having in my fridge thank you I love both those strategies I mean the way that you make it where you put the topping just right on top of the rice is a way to still be able to have it and shorten the time and still have all those flavors and I would guess that if when you make it that way 
then you would kind of mix it together as the leftovers. And then the leftovers would then get yeah. all of the flavors mixed in in the same kind of way. Exactly. Your point about buying already cooked lentils is also a great shortcut. I have a question for you just real quick off the cuff. Yeah. I've gotten those before. My challenge is that maybe I'm not doing all the steps of how to handle those, but a lot of times when I get the pre-cooked lentils, they stick together and they're just not very like aesthetically pleasing to me. And I'm not sure how to keep the lentils intact and kind of separate them when they come out of the packaging. Yeah, you do have a point. When you take it out of the packaging, it is kind of like kind of stuck together. So my first step is actually breaking it all apart. They break apart pretty easily just with my fingers. To your point, you're not getting super beautiful individual lentils that are pristine in their shape. So that is something to note. If you really want to like have it super beautiful, maybe you don't use the pre-cooked ones, but I think they look pretty good and they taste great. So I'm okay to kind of compromise a little bit on that so I can make it in a faster way. I hear your point. Yeah. I mean, like, I guess you got to let go of the perfectionist or expectation of what exactly it's supposed to look like right and in its place you get to actually enjoy it and cook it on a week right. night and you have a young family and you have hungry you know little kids and stuff like you've got to weigh it all out and you're making it happen so i 100 percent love that solution cool thanks i love this dish and i think i would make it more often because a lot of times i'll just sort of have appetizers and you know, finger foods available these days at my social gatherings, but I may not want to totally commit to taking dishes out and Uh having to, you know, serve it. And it tastes better when it's warm. So I was trying to think like, how can we have Adas Polo as more like a snack or an appetizer? Yes. Okay. So I have an idea. Great. What if, and I haven't tried this yet, but I will try it and I'll let you guys know how it turns out. But inspired from like Sicilian or Italian arancini rice balls, what if we take the same concept but make it with adespolo? And you can have it with like the sweetness of the raisins and dates, in your case, the pistachios or with walnuts and basically forming them into little balls just with your hands. And you can then dip that in egg and maybe put a little bit of breadcrumbs around and pan fry them. So they're like little arancini, little fried rice balls made with adespolo. What do you think about that? Oh, so interesting. We actually had those the other night at a sort of an artisanal pizza place that where we ordered out and they had, I love that fusion idea, first of all. So I can't wait to hear you report back, but the particular ones we had, They were so delicious. They had infused saffron, and I don't know if that's the normal thing. Mm. I think a lot of times I'll make it with, like, risotto. Saffron is, like, a a pairing that goes Mm. a lot of time with risotto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know. You know, if you did want to serve meat with your adespolo, a go-to protein a lot of times is chicken. And I'm envisioning, like, a chicken cooked with, like, just a little bit of water and some onions. So it's just, like, really kind of has, like, a little bit of, like, a thick sauce to it that works well with it. I've made it, actually, with ground meat before and kind of mixed that in with the garnishes as well and kind of topped the whole dish with it. I've seen, and it sounds delicious, with just a fried egg on top of it as well. And, you know, that goes back to my, like, my favorite egg dish, which is horma malus. My dad would make for me with the fried egg and the dates. That's a delicious pairing. So you can always just throw a fried egg on top of your adas polo too. Those meat versions all sound super delicious. I think that even just a roast chicken, if you want to save time, a pre-cooked roast chicken would be delicious sliced up. Yes. Alongside or turkey even. Yum. Yum. Today's Ask the Beats. And remember the Ask the Beats segment is when we take a question from you, listener. We can take it from email or grab your voice off in an Instagram message. But today's comes from Paul in San Francisco. And Paul wants to know, Beats, how do you warm up Persian food? And in particular, rice. Great question. First of all, I do have to say, I really do enjoy cold leftovers. Standing up in the kitchen, straight out of the container and eat leftovers. (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) Fast, efficient, and delicious way to eat. But warming it up really makes it super delicious. So that's a great question because if you don't warm up leftover rice enough, 
the consistency is something's off on it. You know, it's like a little bit crunchy. It's like just isn't the fluffy deliciousness that it can be. So I found that what really makes a difference in warming up rice is steam, is adding water. So you can warm it up in the microwave, you can warm it up in a pot, but always add water to it. And I found that like, if you kind of heat it up like low and slower, but having the steam from the water, it makes a difference. That's a great idea. And I get it. And back to <laughs> eating cold Persian food. You, I, I do that if I'm super hungry, but of course I prefer it to be warmer. It's much better when it's warm. Yeah. Do you put water if you're going to do it in the microwave? Yeah. Okay. And then do you cover it? I would cover it. Yeah. I usually like cover it with like another plate mm-hmm. or you could use like a saran wrap or a paper towel or something like that. And just a little bit, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. I mean, if you're warming up a little bit of rice, then yeah, just a little bit of water. I would say like for like one to two cups of rice, I would put like one to two tablespoons of water. Yeah. I agree. That sounds great. I have two little gadgets. If you are doing microwave heating for my birthday, I got some bowl cozies that I absolutely love that someone had actually sewn. And what they are, they're little fabric like receptacles that your bowl goes inside that can go in the microwave and keeps your bowl from getting too hot. Oh, wow. They're so cute. I have to show them to you. I yeah. am really obsessed with these things. And they're reversible. <laughs> How funny. I mean, you can just put a plate under it if you don't want your bowl to get hot, but they're really pretty, so I, I really like them. Then we also have a hover cover. A hover cover <laughs> is a gadget. It magnetically sticks to the top of our microwave And then when you're ready to warm something up, you cover your bowl so that it doesn't splatter and make a huge mess Uh in your kitchen. But again, it sounds like you just put a plate and that works too. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Those are really great ideas. And I do feel a lot of times like warming it up on the stove is a little bit easier too if you're actually like you're going to be doing it more than like one portion. Like you can kind of have it like in a pan. But I really do think that when you do warm up Persian food, having a lid and having like some steam, so adding some additional liquid really kind of makes a difference. Great. Well, thank you so much. Good question. Thank you so much, Bichaju, for talking through that recipe. Hope everyone has a cozy winter and we look forward to chatting with you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,